Sam Jose. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. <laughs> Welcome to We Are San Jose. These are your stories. This is my story of my family in the Santa Clara Valley. My grandparents were born here in this valley. My mother and family were born here in this valley. And I was born here and one of my sons and my grandchildren, several of them were born here. So we're, they, my grandchildren are eighth generation Bay Area Californians. We have a colorful and interesting history. My grandfather was a bus driver and streetcar conductor and bus driver and drove for San Jose City Lines where he had to drive from Alum Rock Park to Stanford University. And back in those days they had to get off of the car, the streetcar, and turn it on a turntable by hand. And and he worked for San Jose City Lines from 1900 to about 1946 when he retired. Um, his wife, my grandmother, was a seamstress and a stay-at-home mom. And she did sewing for people in the community. And they, my aunt worked for um, uh, Pacific Bell for 30 years or more. Um, my mother was a stay-at-home mom and she worked for um, she was as a stay-at-home mom. She went to um, she went to adult education. She worked as a PTA president, or no, excuse me, PTA um, publicity chairman. And I I attended Ann Darling Elementary School, Roosevelt Junior High, San Jose High, and San Jose City College. Um, my father was um, a worker during the day for Babbitt Bearing Company and he had a dance band called the Harmony Lads and played for dances on the weekends. He played for famous different places like the Moose Lodge out on Mount Pleasant Road. He played for the CPO Club at Moffett Field and San Jose, uh, Los Gatos Swim and Racquet Club. And sometimes he did record royalty jobs at Agnew State Hospital on weeknights, got paid through the record royalty funds. Um, while I uh, attended school, I um, had lots and lots of friends. As an only child, I found lots of others that were only children or lots of others that I still continue to keep in touch with. People that I went to elementary school, junior high, high school, and college with, and keep in touch with them to this day. Um, I was married in this valley. My, um, my First husband and I moved to Colorado, and so we were gone for five and a half years. Moved back to San Jose, and Daniel was born, my youngest son. And, um, and then my older sons were, um, were attending McKinley School and Yerba Buena High School. Oh, um, and the junior high in that area was, I've forgotten the name of it, I'm sorry. Um, and then they, um, they went on to uh, complete high school and, and then uh, my oldest son got married at 18 and when he did he provided me with some wonderful little grandchildren that were eighth generation Bay Area Californians. Um, the grandchildren have since grown up and moved on to do other things in their lives. Um, while I was here in San Jose, I've worked for FMC Corporation, I've worked for J.J. Newberry's, I've worked for um, Cal State of California Department of Motor Vehicles, and Contractor State License Board. I worked at the Alfred E. Alquist Building uh, at 100 Paseo de San Antonio. I uh, 
decided to leave the Bay Area and go on to uh, Sacramento to work for DMV at headquarters and retire there. I've um, got fond roots here in this valley and I keep in touch with my friends uh, on a regular basis and get to see them and watch how their families have grown and uh, I have fond memories of being able to attend San Jose High School class reunions for the 10-year reunion, the 20-year reunion, and the 25-year reunion, and, um, and the 40-year reunion, and the 50-year reunion. And they were fun events that, that I got to attend. I'm very pleased that I've been able to have family roots in the Santa Clara Valley. Hi, my name is Maria Bandy. I was born and happily raised here in San Jose in the north side, uh, the second Italian neighborhood uh, in San Jose. The first is right here amongst our midst where we are now, and the other one was in Willow Glen. My parents um, immigrated here from Sicily in 1920 and 1921, and I was the last accident baby. Uh, so I had several brothers and sisters who were older, uh, Tonette's mom being one of them. Um, it was a wonderful place to grow up and I have such wonderful memories of San Jose. Uh, safe, comfortable. Uh, our neighborhood was full of our Italian and Sicilian people and I grew up amongst the culture which gave me a strong sense for, the, for my culture. The first memories I really have uh, were dark ones because it was right after uh, World War I began, World War II began. Uh, I was born in 1940, so I don't remember 41 uh, or 42, but by 43, 44, and 45, I remember the blackouts where we had to have black shades drawn down and where uh, the warden would come around our little block war and make sure that we had our sh coverings down so the light wouldn't be escaping just in case the Japanese were gonna bomb San Jose or on their way to San Francisco. Uh, it was not a good time. I, both my brothers were in the war. Uh, my mom uh, had to fill out an application for exemption from internment because like the Japanese, many Italians were interred and, uh, and her application was denied, but luckily she and I didn't have to go. Uh, then as my brothers came home from the war with the grace of God safe, uh, happy times came again. I went to grant school with several of the Japanese American children that had been interred. And throughout that time, we never really spoke about that. But then growing up, I remember going downtown with my mom on the bus, helping to interpret for her sometimes. My favorite building was the old Bank of America building with this green light flashing on its tower so the airplanes wouldn't hit it in the middle of the night. Uh, and all of the, it was just beautiful inside with all this marble floors and this gold gilded uh, cages where the tellers were. Uh, the uh, medical dental building, those were our two skyscrapers. And now, of course, there's so many other wonderful buildings around. Uh, but it was great. Uh, all down First Street were several theaters, uh, the UA, the California, the studio. Uh, Padre was on Second Street where the comedy club is now. Mission was right across the street. From, we had several theaters be before TV. And, and one of the fun things about First Street in my teen years was all the uh, young men, young boys, if they didn't have their own car, um, they borrowed the family car and would go what we call cruising First Street or cruising the main. And, and all they did was drive up and down <laughs> showing off their cars and their girlfriends. Uh, and in between when it was time for refreshment, then they'd either go like in Happy Days or American Graffiti, they would go to either Mel's Drive-In, which was on 15th and Santa Clara, or go all the way down the other side of uh, the other end of Santa Clara where it turned into the Alameda, where John's drive-in was. And now that's the new Whole Foods. But these were good, happy times. The, the town just gave us so much. It was just a, a beautiful place to live uh, and be. Unfortunately, uh, last November, we lost our uh, Holy Cross Catholic Church in our, in our neighborhood. I'm still in that neighborhood. Uh, and I tease my children saying that, uh, well, I, I'm not moving out of the house. Uh, you'll have to either carry me out one way or another. So. Uh, <laughs> That's how I feel about San Jose. Before I forget, I do want to say that up and down uh, California, starting with our capital and so many cities and in our Bay Area, we have several holy names, Sacramento, San Rafael, 
uh, San Leandro, San Mateo, all of them are pronounced very close to its original name. Then we come to San Jose, and if you've been here for many years, it became, instead of a one, two syllable, it became a two, one syllable, syllable. So if you're from San Jose, you know that when you hear San Jose, that we are San Jose, it's a strong part of San Jose. And um, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm sure I'm leaving out a few things, but um, we're very proud of uh, my, my parents. It was the agriculture. My dad was an orchardist. My mom worked the canneries. Those were the jobs. Um, so this, this is what, what they did. They worked hard and they established themselves. And now I, I think before I take up too much more time, I'd like to turn it over to my niece, Tonette. Okay. And so you can continue on for me. Thank you, Auntie Ree. I'm Tonette Rancador Slaviero. Um, I too, like my aunt, was born here and raised here in San Jose. Um, have loved this city all of my life. Um, I grew up on the Berryessa side of San Jose, so primarily um, my aunt and my grandparents grew up here in this area in the downtown neighborhood. Um, and then when my mother and father married, they moved over to the uh, Berryessa side. Um, and everything, almost everything around us was orchards. I can remember growing up playing outside and just if you went right around the corner from our street you'd find an orchard. If you went right around the corner to um, Penitentia Creek which is near uh, where we lived as well there was all orchards past that area. So we are such a rich valley for agriculture. I just, um, it's hard to see, uh, Silicon Valley is great. It's great to see it building so much for the, for the city, but we have the most fertile soil here in San Jose. And uh, we still do export quite a bit of agriculture. Um, growing up, I went to Toyon School, so I got to know a lot of the kids in that area. And one of my fondest memories as a child was going over to my aunt and uncle's house who had an orchard and a, um, a huge Victorian home on their property on the corner of Sierra and Morrill Road, um, which is in the Berryessa area as well. Um, Auntie Anne and Uncle Jim Terramina um, owned a, a huge home there uh, where they had, I don't know how many acres that home was, but um, we had, they had beautiful uh, one acre walnut orchards and all of us children in the fall would get together uh, her grandchildren and my brothers and my cousins would all get together and pick walnuts and every bucket of walnuts we picked we got a quarter <laughs> and <laughs> that green was, hands <laughs> yes and lots of green and, and dark hands from all of the um, the walnuts and the husks um, so that's one of my fondest childhood memories um, and then going to, uh, I did move to Italy for two years. Um, I, I lived in Sicily with my father's family. That's where we're all from. And then we moved back in 1971. And then I attended high school at Piedmont Hills High School. So even that has changed and evolved quite a bit. So, um, so just looking back, um, we love this town and this city. Um, it's brought us so much love. And I know Auntie Ree has had so many wonderful memories. My mom uh, worked here at the California Theater, uh, which was called, I think, The Fox, if it, I'm not it was mistaken. Called the California, then The Fox, and now they changed it back to the, the California theater. again. So she was an usherette, I believe, at the theater. And my aunt has a lot of memories. We go to the opera here still. And uh, when we walk in, she'll just kind of look around and say, I can't believe this is where your mom used to work. Um, and uh, we used to, to she usher. She worked her way up to a bookkeeper. Yes. And then she worked at the Sears on Azure, which were, she also worked, which is no longer there as well. <laughs> <laughs> lots of our, our famous landmarks have gone away, so unfortunately. But lots of good things have happened in our city, too. Yeah. And now the emergence of Little Italy, which is just a block away from here, is just awesome. We're hoping that that blossoms uh, because we've heard about so many Italy uh, neighborhoods throughout the country that it would be great to put one on the map in San Jose as well. So, um, I don't know, Auntie Reed, do you have any more to add? I, I just wanted, when you mentioned about the orchards, as young people, there were no McDonald's, there's not as many McDonald's or right. fast food places. That was our summer job to earn money for school clothes, was cutting apricots, picking prunes, and, and th those were the jobs. Our, our folks worked the, the orchards. Her father was an orchardist, like my dad as well. Uh, we're just very proud, very proud of our heritage, very proud of this town and what has grown up to be. 
And one other thing too, Valley Fair Mall was the only mall, it was the first mall <laughs> that they built here in San Jose. I remember we used to just come shopping downtown. My first movie was Mary Poppins, I think, <laughs> back in the day. Uh, but yeah, Valley Fair Mall was the very first. So anyway, thank you so much. Um, and we, we really enjoyed telling our story. Yeah. Thank you. This is my San Jose story. I moved to uh, San Jose from the East Bay, moved 40 miles south to continue my education at San Jose State. When I arrived, rented an apartment, greatest thing in the world, there was a bike shop underneath it. I was already riding bikes. I started riding bikes uh, in 1967 with the what was called at that time the 10-speed bicycle boom. And when I came here in 1973, really wasn't Silicon Valley yet. In fact, um, it was perhaps aerospace valley, uh, the computer industry really hadn't gone full bore, but there was an incredible bicycle community. Uh, this included all these Lockheed and GE engineers and IBM engineers who are riding their bikes to work. It seems that they like this concept of using their bodies in the machine and man interface. And, uh, when I got this apartment, bike shop down, downstairs, I go, well, I've done a little work in bike shops before. This would be a good job to help me get through school. So I started working in the bike shop. And there was this man across the street, a few years older than me, most interesting man perhaps I've ever met in my life. Uh, he was what we'd call uh, mentally challenged. He was the last Western Union bicycle messenger in the world, and he was a big deal at the velodrome and in the local cycling community. And he started introducing me to people. I started riding with people. One of the people I rode with was a young San Jose State graduate, Mike Sinyard, that a few years later started a company called Specialize, which now started in San Jose, is now in Morong Hill. It's perhaps the largest bicycle manufacturer distributor in the world. It seems to me that there was this incredible thing happening. There were all these engineers, uh, building uh, these wonderful things. And some of them dropped out. Some of them were the children of those engineers. One person I met was Phil Wood, who had worked uh, at FMC, and he started making bicycle products. And um, then Mike Sinyard uh, went into business with someone named Jim Blackburn, who was also a San Jose State industrial design graduate. And he was building bicycle products and one of his employees, Jim Jennies, started building, um, uh, went off on his own, making bicycle helmets, revolutionary design, which is the standard for the international bicycle community now, the, the lightweight foam helmets. It seems to me that it was so amazing because as Silicon Valley rose, all these innovations in Bicycling were happening here in the Santa Clara Valley. Historically, perfect climate, uh, wonderful roads to ride, um, fewer houses than there are now, but these great hills to climb that were perfect for bicycles because they had to be built for heavy draft animals to go up and down, to build an observatory on one side to help bring redwood logs down on the other side. And it just was this perfect climate and all these people were so involved in making products. Well, as time went on, um, my friend Mike Sinyard was looking to expand his business and he needed more dealers, so he convinced me to open a bicycle shop. Downstairs from my apartment, the bicycle shop who was there had gone out of business, and so for 30, 35 years I was in the bicycle business. Now, along with all this, um, I got involved in bicycle racing. And um, there's a velodrome in San Jose. Perhaps one of the reasons why the bicycle community was so strong here is there's pretty much always been a velodrome in San Jose. Since the 1890s or 1894, there were three velodromes in San Jose. And that seemed to be, gee, even in the 70s, some people would say, you know, I don't understand all these new people are moving in. We ride bicycles here. We have this bicycle culture. but. I got more involved in the velodrome, and in 1981, um, Don Peterson, uh, the president of San Jose Bike Club, started a program where he actually had formal races at night, every Friday night through the summer. 
And as I started to um, race bicycles in this program, I suddenly was thrown in with the top riders in this area, which constituted a lot of the top riders in the nation because this was a center of cycling. I talked to uh, uh, journalists from Southern California um, and I'd say, you know, it's like it was a California thing. They said, no, it was a Bay Area thing and San Jose had the velodrome. And so uh, I got to be known as a bike racer. I was in the industry. I got to be known as a pretty good bicycle mechanic. And then um, my friend Bob Gonzalez, everybody knew him as Speedy, the mentally challenged individual I talked to earlier, had another friend, Mike Stephanie. And Mike Stephanie was brilliant, but he had his own type of mental problems, uh, severe depression, and the two of them made a team. And it turns out that Mike's dad was Edward Cahalan's Stephanie, which some people might recognize is the father of the expressway system in Santa Clara County. He was the chief civil engineer for Santa Clara County, and most of the roads uh, that we're driving on now were either built or improved by him in the 50s and 60s. And Ed was quite a cyclist. His father was a professional cyclist. And Mike, his son, would complain to me. He says, you know, it's really tough because my grandfather was a professional cyclist and grandpa would tell me you need to race bikes. And my great uncle was a professional baseball player and a manager of the Oakland Oaks and the San Francisco Seals. And he said, you should play ball. And he said, I always had this problem. But the idea was sport was so important. And um, Ed was a bit in, big influence on my life, uh, became a close friend. Um, and uh, within the context of the bicycle shop, Ed convinced me that I needed to uh, be more involved in, in, in all aspects of the cycling and also the history of cycling, which much of which I learned from him. So uh, last year, I was asked to be the co-curator of the exhibit we have at the Clyde Arbuckle Gallery at History San Jose and History Park about this cycling history, which we're now trying to share with everyone. And the fact that riding a bike here is just as normal as logging on to a website. Thank you. That's my San Jose story. Hello. My name is Sylvia Carroll, and I've always been kind of a political junkie fighting for the underdog, I believe. Now, back in the 60s, San Jose was still a pretty conservative place. So it may be a surprise for many to know that in the 60s, there was an organization that uh, had people following police cars on weekend nights to make sure the police didn't rough up the minority people who they stopped. Now, this may sound strange, but we're still dealing with situations like this today, 50 years later. But what I wanted to tell you about was Bob Lindsay. He ran for city council in 1965. That's not unusual, except that he was an avowed Marxist. And in those Cold War days, this was not a popular thing. People didn't want to sign his ads because it would be scary. But I wasn't scared because I believed in what he believed in, which was low-income housing, no discrimination against races and public ownership of utilities. These are all things we, we're concerned with even today. So times haven't changed so much. Now, um, he didn't get elected, I will add. Uh, one of the things that did happen was that we got a publicly owned transportation system. In the old days, we had a private company called City Lines, and they didn't give very good service. I think one indication of it was that there were buses that said, on the bus, 17th and Rosa. And since I lived on 17th Street briefly, I went to look for Rosa, but there wasn't any Rosa Street. It had, its name has been changed, I believe, to Heading years earlier, but the bus company had never even changed the signs on their buses. I think that's an indication of what was happening. Another little incident was when the Mercury News built their new building and they still had a lease on their old building on West, San Car West Santa Clara Street downtown. And they really wanted somebody to take over their lease because, well, who would want to pay a lease on a building you're not using? And a man named Sam Della Maggiore, who'd been a county supervisor for many, many years, 16, I believe, um, wanted the Mercury News' endorsement. 
And the best way to get it, he figured, was to have the county lease that building out from under the Mercury News, and then he was sure to get their endorsement. They were asking for it to be a, a building for the welfare department, but they had to get funds from the state, and the state person came down to San Jose and said that the press room was not an appropriate location for a welfare department office. And it was presented at a Board of Supervisors meeting. I'd heard about this, so I decided to go to the meeting. And Mr. Della Maggiore was very, very angry. And he kept saying, the state is rigging this against us. And he was so angry. And I walked up and I said, the more I hear this, the more I think it's being rigged the other way. He blew up. He got very angry. He said, and who are you, young lady? Because I was very young then. And I told him. And he just was angry as could be. So I sat down, and two days later, I got a phone call from the head of the welfare department who said, is this the lady who talked at the Board of Supervisors meeting? And I thought, oh my gosh, they're out to get me now. And he said, thank you for saying what everybody else has been afraid to say. But it's true. The Mercury News wants to get rid of that building. And the best way would be to have the county take it over and then Della Maggiore would get endorsed. Well, the publicity that got enabled some other people to offer buildings. And, and while the Mercury News building did not ever get taken over by the county, at least the price came down. And the other buildings that were offered were much cheaper. And finally, the whole affair was over. And that was that. And we don't have Sam Della Maggiore anymore, nor many other people now. I think to have somebody in office for 16 years as a supervisor is a mighty long time. And while these are long time ago things, 50 years ago, there's still things we're concerned about today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>